Welcome to physics. This is going to be a fun year. I hope that you learn something and appreciate our world around us a little bit better. By the way of introduction, the way these lectures will work, this, uh, this is the title slide that you'll see at the beginning of each chapter. So it, it names the, the book that we're using, uh, the Cut and Allen Johnson. Um, this is in red, bold red, is the chapter title. So it's chapter one and the title of the chapter. Then down below in these videos, you'll see um, these numbers. This is a section number. So the first section, uh, the first segment of this lecture will be a segment that discusses section 1.2 of chapter one. And you might say, well, hang on, where's section 1.1? Isn't there section 1.1? And not always will, be there, will there be a lecture segment on each section of the book. But within this section, as I'll show you, there, uh, most of the slides will come from this section, um, but there may be slides from other sections that will help to clarify the material. Or in this particular case, you'll see some slides from section 1.1 that I've built into it. And, and why don't I have a uh, separate section for a section, uh, sec uh, separate lecture segment for section 1.1? And the answer is that I normally try and work things so that each lecture segment will have at least one concept in it. So this is a concept number, concept 1-1. Now these are concepts that I have defined that are found in your, in your book, but I've uh, tried to identify the most important pieces of information and identified them as concepts which I expect you to know and I've given each concept a number. So in the first se lecture segment, I will talk about section, mostly section 1.2 of the book, and we will introduce concept 1-1. So there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lecture segments, and uh, you can see the concepts that will be discussed in each of these lecture segments, and um, so it looks like 14 concepts in all in chapter one. Those 14 concepts will give you a working knowledge, everything you need to know to solve problems in the homework, uh, to uh, solve problems on tests, etc. cetera. Um, sometimes when, the, when a lecture goes long on a particular, per, particular section, then I'll split it into two so it's, it comes out in a little bit more uh, bite-sized pieces. Okay, section 1.2. So this next slide is a um, slide introducing a particular, particular section of the book. And then the concept um, on this slide is that we'll be discussing in this section is define the SI units for length, mass, and time. Okay, so in the way of introduction, now you'll notice that the, at the top of each slide, I've tried to make it... Uh, consistent that at the top of each slide you'll find a section number. So this, the material on this slide is actually found in section 1.1 uh, which is titled uh, The Nature of Physics. So if you want more information, a lot of times the information that we're, that we're presenting here is in kind of a condensed format. If you don't quite understand something you can go to the textbook and read the appropriate section. and. Um, so physics has developed out of the efforts of men and women to explain our physical environment and encompasses a remarkable variety of phenomena. Uh, I know this is kind of a general statement, uh, including planetary orbits, rocketry, galaxy formation, uh, radio and TV waves, we'll talk about next semester um, in physics um, 2120, magnetism, lasers, electricity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so physics, the, the whole idea of physics is to predict how nature will behave in one situation based on the results of, an ex, of experimental data obtained in another situation. And as we'll see in um, second semester, near the end of the second semester of the course, there are some situations in which um, the, the result of physics 
is random. It's really random in quantum mechanics and in um, chaos, chaotic dy dynamics. You can't exactly tell what's going to happen at the end of the experiment because nature won't tell you. But most of this semester, uh, A plus B equals C, and it will and it will work every single time. The now. I consider physics to be the most basic of science sciences. Uh, it certainly serves as a basis for chemistry, engineering, astronomy, biology. At the very heart um, of the world is physics. Uh, why study physics? Here's why I study it. Um, others study it for different reasons, but I study it because it's beautiful. In the sense of Henry Jules Poincaré, who said, the scientist does not study nature because it is useful. Let me say that again. The, the scientist does not study nature because it is useful. You say, well, hang on just a second here. Wait a minute. I thought science is useful, and it helps us make a, be a better mousetrap, and it helps us go to the moon, and things like that, and have a better toaster oven, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, science does help with those things. But that's not why I study it. The scientist studies it because he delights in it, and he delights in it because, because it is beautiful. If nature were not beautiful, it would not be worth knowing. So what I hope to convey to you this semester and next semester, if you're with me for the second semester, is some of the beauty of science. That's my goal. Physics experiments. Uh, okay, so now we're, we're on material from section 1.2 of the textbook. Physics experiments in, involve the measurement of a variety of quantities. Uh, to be re reproducible and accurate in those measurements, um, we've got to define some kind of units. Uh, if you're going to have a yardstick, is it measured in inches or centimeters or what? We've got to have some standard to measure things against. So hence the need for, for the definition of units of measurement. We use in, in this class, we'll use the so-called SI units. The SI comes from the System International SI of units. That's the French name uh, of a system of units published in 1960 and accepted by, by international agreement. So what are the SI units for length, mass, and time? And the answer is, for length, it's the meter. For mass, it's the kilogram. So the meter is abbreviated with a lowercase m. And the kilogram is abbreviated with just kg. K, k standing for kilo, and we'll talk about that in the next slide or two. And then the second, and that's abbreviated with, with just a single s. That's the unit of length. Um, mass and time. Other units, the CGS uh, system of units, so this is the SI unit that we'll be using primarily. We will see uh, lengths measured in centimeters. Generally, we'll convert those over to meters. Um, we'll see masses measured in grams. Generally, they'll be converted, converted over into kilograms in order for the units to work out correctly in our equations. Um, there's also CGS stands for CGS. You can see that right there. Then also the British engineering system of units, uh, where lengths are measured in feet uh, that you're familiar with, foot about that long. This uh, unit of mass is called the slug, believe it or not, not the pound. As we'll see, the unit of pound, uh, the the pound unit applies to forces, not masses. Forces and masses are not the same. And then finally, seconds. All three use the units of seconds. Um, now, these are, these are called the base SI units. And the reason is they're used to define most of the other units that we will use during the, the, during the course. And um, force and energy, those are measured in units that are based on these three units, meters, kilograms, and seconds. Some people call this the MKS system. It's one way to remember it. OK, here's a demonstration of the three base SI units. 
This is a demonstration of SI units. In, in history, different groups have, have looked at possibilities for how you measure distances, how you measure masses, and how you measure time. And the system that's been settled upon is called the SI system. And it was agreed upon in about 1960 that um, in science and, and throughout the world we would use this system. There are some countries, uh, United States among them, who, who don't really use it in everyday life still. But in science uh, and in this class, we'll use the SI system. The SI system uses the meter to measure lengths. So this is a meter stick. Its length is, is one meter, which works out to 100 centimeters, a centimeter being about the size of uh, with your little finger. Um, converting a meter into units we normally use in America, which are called the British engineering units, the meter translates into about 39 and a little bit extra of uh, inches. So one yard would be 36 inches, so a meter is 3.3 3 .3 or so inches larger than a yard. The unit of mass in the SI system is called the kilogram. One kilogram is 1,000 grams. This is a, a steel uh, kilogram. It feels pretty hefty in my hand. I wish I could pass it around through the camera and the IVC system so you could feel what it feels like. If you convert a kilogram into a weight near the Earth's surface, we'll talk about the distinction between mass and weight in upcoming chapters. But if you go ahead and convert it into a weight, it weighs about 2.2 pounds near the Earth's surface. This is another uh, one kilogram weight, and that's in brass, and here's one in, in iron. The unit for time. The SI unit for time is the second, and sure enough, it's the one that you're familiar with from your watch, etc. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, etc. And that's the unit of time. 